All right, so how is everybody? Fantastic. Awesome. Questions for Coach Signetti. Frank, we're two weeks in. How do you feel with where the offense is at right now? Well, you know what? After week one, we felt pretty good. You know, uh, we felt like we'd find out a lot about ourselves after week two of the Cincinnati game. Um, obviously, there's some, we did some good things, but we got to improve, and we're looking forward to seeing how we play Saturday night. What does Phil have to do to connect with Bob more often? You guys took a lot of shots and didn't wear any of hit in this last one. Yeah, you know what, Chris? Sometimes, you know, it's, it's like we all play golf, putting, mm -hmm. hitting the ball. Sometimes, man, you're in such a great rhythm, you don't miss anything. Other times, you know, you come up short. You know, uh, the most important thing is that you play one play at a time and you separate it. Football is the ultimate team game. Mm -hmm. It takes everyone out there to try to function as one to try to get the maximum execution. How, how much of that was a problem of miscommunication, just not being on the same page, guys not reading things the same? Well, I don't think it's miscommunication. I just think it's execution. You know, uh, when you call a running play or a passing play, it all starts up front. Uh, it takes everybody. So when we came in and watched the tape Sunday morning, you know, we saw that, hey, we got to get everyone just, it starts with coaching, right? It starts with myself. It starts with coaching. Uh, we're all in this thing together, and we just got to get better execution. Have, have you seen Phil take on just, like, respond to, you know, having a rough game and challenging himself <laughs> while also challenging his team? Well, it's not the first rough game that Phil and I have been through together. So I know how he responds. Um, you know, he loves football. He loves his teammates. He is an unbelievable competitor. He always looks at it himself first. Um, and I know he he's really looking forward to getting back out there and playing again. The guy loves to compete. He loves to play. Frank, where do you feel Phil? Where do you feel Phil is at from a mechanical standpoint? Do you feel there's anything that he needs to clean up? Well, every quarterback, every player that plays football, regardless of the position, there's always things to clean up, right? We always talk about it. Look, life's difficult. Football's difficult. There's no such thing as perfect. We're striving for excellence. Um, any quarterback, Phil in this particular case, it all starts with trusting what you see, making good decisive decisions in the passing game, and then throwing an accurate ball. And so many things come into that. You got to have good protection. You got to have the route on the same page. And uh, hey, that's why we love coaching, man. We love trying to put these guys in a position to be successful and see it come to fruition on game day. What was he like the, Sunday morning when he came in here? Was he defined, I'm going to get better? You know, was he determined? What was his attitude Well, like? Phil, once again, is the ultimate competitor, and he looks at himself first. You know, the first thing he said to me was, hey, I'm going to play better, and we know he will. Um, every quarterback's gone through that. But when I saw him the next morning, I could tell that after watching the tape, he was like, hey, we're going to be good to go. Frank, in, in two games, Rodney's touched the ball 12 times. Do you feel like he needs to be more involved? In absolutely. Forward? Absolutely. I take a critical look at myself in terms of the game plan and the play calling. Um, you know, after the fact, yeah, I'd like to get Rodney more touches. Do you think I'd like to get the entire running back crew more touches. Do you think the pass protection issues could have affected Phil like early and prevented the passing game from Absolutely. The I mean, that, that is great. that's a great question. Um, you know, I've been blessed in this profession. I've told the offensive staff this story many times. I've coached with six NFL teams. I've sat around that NFL table where the head coach and the coordinators and the entire staff, you talk about how are we going to win this game because you put a plan together. How are we going to play the game? How are we going to win this game? And usually the first or second thing that comes out of the defensive coordinator's mouth is we got to hit the quarterback early and often. And when quarterbacks get hit early and often, it's hard and it multiplies. And you put them in a tough situation. You know, we got our pass pro must improve. Frank, what went into the decision to put BJ in the starting lineup this last week? And, you know, where do you feel he stood after, you know, you watched the tape on Saturday? Yeah, you know, BJ had a great spring, true freshman, great spring. You could see that he's very talented. And for BJ, it was going to be a matter of time. And you don't want to rush it, right? You know what I mean? Um, no reason to rush it. And then we just felt like after the first game and through his performance and how he had been practicing and playing, that it was time to put him in there. Frank, you outlined a number of things to fix. How do you fix those quickly enough so you're ready for Saturday? Well, 
that's why you practice, right? You know, um, that's why you meet. It's why you practice. Uh, we, you know, you got to trust your training. You got to believe in yourself. You know, just like today, man, I just walked off the practice field. We had a great day, man. It was a great day. Uh, love these players. Love these coaches. We got to do a better job coaching and hopefully put them in a position Saturday night to have success. You talk about how Phil has responded this week. How have other you know, veteran guys like Jake Cradle, Blake Zubovic responded from Saturday? Oh, I think you've seen a great positive response. Uh, when we talked as an offense, which would have been uh, yesterday morning, you know, that's when you address the offense, talk about the keys to victory. You know, hey, you know, uh, I could tell they were really excited and hungry to get back to work and uh, earn, the right, earn the right for victory. So I know that you know, Phil and the focus for quarterbacks are to get the ball to the open man, make your decisions based off of what the defense is doing and trying to make the right reads. But how do you balance that with also getting the ball to guys like Gavin Bartholomew, who when you guys got it to him on that one drive, you walked right down the yeah, field. Yeah, that's pretty. But it's tough to get him the ball when people are trying to take him away. Yeah. Well, you know what? There's a balance. There's a balance in the passing game as there is in the run game in terms of the schemes you're running. Um, who you're trying to feature as the primary receiver in the passing game. Ultimately, where does the ball go is based on the defensive coverage. Um, hopefully, you see every, every game day that we distribute the ball to our playmakers. Gavin's done a great job. To follow up on that, were, were there opportunities for Gavin out there that, that you guys maybe just didn't hit on for some reason? Or yeah, just... you know, I mean, there's that one play that comes to mind earlier in the game. It's actually the same route that he caught the touchdown pass mm -hmm. on that, you know, uh, Maybe if the ball location's a little more on the back shoulder, maybe it's a touchdown. There's always there's always opportunities missed. You know, regardless of of uh, how well a guy plays, there's always going to be missed opportunities. You try to maximize your opportunities, minimize the mistakes. The last two games, I've seen red zone opportunities when you guys lined up and kind of caught the defense off guard and then just couldn't get the ball off yeah. in time. You know, what has to go into those moments? You know, that even reminds me back in. Uh, 09 when we went up and played Buffalo and we did all the motion shifting and Doran's out there all by himself and it just takes it takes the operation of the quarterback to see it and then get the quicker cadence to the center to get the ball snapped and get the ball put out there mm -hmm. you know being around Aaron Rodgers he's the best at it you know that's a, that's where we're trying to go Frank you're, you're familiar obviously with this rivalry what do you expect from down there? What do you, how do you prepare your offense for some of the noise and, and what they're going to find down there? Yeah, well, first off, Coach Narduzzi does a great job preparing the entire football program. You know, you go out there and practice, and you practice the crowd noise and, you know, the different cadences, silent cadences that you need. I think we're all familiar with Morgantown. It's a very passionate town, passionate state. They love football, and, and it's the best robbery there is. It's a backyard brawl. It's going to be a lot of fun. What goes through an offensive coordinator's mind? You're watching a game from the booth. Your quarterback's struggling. You know, you've coached for a long time. You've been around. I'm sure yeah. the thought crosses your mind, hey, let's see what someone else can do. You yeah. know, what's the thought process as you're sort of Well, the playing? thought process is first, you've got to really know why. You know, whether it's your quarterback or maybe it's even your runner. You know, you've got to really know why are we not getting the desired results. And we know those results are hard to begin with. The disadvantage of college football over pro football. Pro football, man, you're sitting in that, in that box and you got an iPad next to you. And you see every play, you know? In college football, you know, you can't see everything. So based on where your eye discipline is, you're relying on a lot of other information. Um, so when I came in here the next morning and I, and I saw certain things, I felt a lot better about our quarterback play. I wouldn't want to put any quarterback in that position and situation. That starts with me, you know what I mean? Not one time did I ever think about changing quarterbacks. We have a starting quarterback and we have a backup and a third. And, you know, I, I would treat them all the same. I love all three guys. And as the course of the game went, there, there was no reason to change. Because, you know, there were some great plays that were made. You know, why don't we talk about some of the great plays that were made? Oh my goodness, the touchdown pass, the two touchdown passes to Tay, and some of the other scramble efforts is unbelievable because, you know, we were under duress, and that's what we got to get cleaned up.
over the Jerry's is the last one. Oh, the yeah, last one? Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. Then I'm That's right. Right. No, you have the last one. I'm going to change my question then. Go ahead. Uh, back in the day, what are your best memories of the, of the brawl? Well, the the one that really sticks out to me and is, is, you know, I'm a young kid, 1975. Bobby Bowden is the head coach of uh, West Virginia University. My dad's the offensive coordinator. Pitt rolled in there. I believe, uh, you know, Pitt was one of the top teams in the country. I think it was on ABC TV, and Bill McKenzie kicks the 39-yard field goal, last play of the game, and we beat Pitt 17-14. That was an unbelievable memory as a young kid to rush that field and just be part of this great, great backyard brawl, this rivalry. Did you rush the field? Absolutely. Yeah. I still have part of the goalpost. You do? Absolutely. Cool. All right. Frank, thank you so much.